Hello, everyone. Um, my name is uh, Michał Dulko. I'm uh, working at Red Hat. Excuse me? <laughs> uh, I'm working on Red Hat, and uh, I'm a core reviewer in the Kuru Kubernetes project. Uh, this is Daniel Mayado. Uh, he's the PTL of the project, working on the same team as, as me. So we are here to tell you how we've made uh, a Kubernetes application from the Kuru Kubernetes, which is an OpenStack service. So first of all, we'll walk you through, uh, in a pretty detailed way, uh, to tell you about uh, what Kuru Kubernetes is, so you can understand the, uh, the requirements it has as an, as an application. And then we will uh, walk you through those requirements and how we solve them uh, using the Kubernetes primitives. And this is the link to the slides in case you, uh, you want to see them on your laptops. So, uh, I, sorry. I will hand over to Daniel who will tell you about uh, what core Kubernetes is. Okay, thanks, Michal. So first, let me introduce you, first of all, our awesome pet. This is the bloody bus. <laughs> so there are some funny rhymes with the name in Spanish. Uh, but we also first started, as you might notice, Kurir uh, means originally in Czech, Kurir. And uh, this is because mainly we are translating uh, container stuff from one part to another. So this is the, this guy on your right was originally our first pet, but uh, after the standardization uh, with foundation, we migrated to that. So Kubernetes is, of course, an OpenStack project. Uh, we have several repos, and if you attended our onboarding session, we went through the details there. Uh, in case you're interested, just feel free to catch us offline and we'll explain to you. So we do the main development on the career-kubernetes repo, and also we package that, and it's a, a package there on, on Python package index. We have quite a healthy community, so we have uh, developers and core reviewers from companies such as, of course, Red Hat, then Huawei, Intel, Samsung, and a few others, and also independent contributors. So we went out of the experimental phase in OpenStack Queens, uh, and we started with our version 0.4.3. And so far, we have been following the cycle with the intermediary release model, but we are thinking about changing that in the future. So basically, our goal is to, uh, we'll go through what CNI is, but uh, we want to uh, provide a container network interface plugin that basically would use OpenStack Neutron, uh, OpenStack Neutron for uh, Kubernetes uh, potent working. And also, we would like to have a service equivalent to Kubeproxy using OpenStack native sprites such as uh, Octavia, or in, in the past, we also were using a Neutron Elbus version too, which is just somehow maintained. So let me tell you a little bit about what CNI is. As I was telling you before, well, CNI is, a, of course, contain an auto interface, and it's separate meant to provide you with a networking plugin for Kubernetes. It was originally a, a project covered by the CNCF, which is a cloud native computing foundation. Um, above all those stuff that is noted there, and which I, I won't be going line by line because I think it's a little bit excessive, but mainly I would like you to Keep this in mind because this would be important for the second part. And it's that the CNI plugins are, in fact, executables that should be run with parameter in mvars. And Michal will be explaining to you afterwards what, why this is important and how did we get to that silence uh, when we were making containers out of our project. So, what's the, what are the motivations for query Kubernetes? First of all, we wanted to, of course, get, let's say, the power from upstack Neutron for your Kubernetes cluster, but with, let's say, one caveat. So here, you can see we have the sun. So you recall what was there. The sun yeah, could get a lot of gravity. Then we have a neutron star, which, of course, we are not speaking about uh, the neutron networking. Then there's a black hole, and there's this neutron. So let's say uh, we would like to get much more speed out of it. <laughs> Um, basically, we want to use some of the neutron functionalities because neutron is a, such a huge project to get uh, them for port networking. So what do we want? We want to provide an interconnection between OpenStack VMs and Kubernetes pods and containers. So pod to VM, VM to pod, and VMs to services and to ingress controllers at some points. 
So also, let's say I'm, that's the main motivation for the project. So if you don't use Kudir, you can, of course, have networking in between Kubernetes and OpenStack, but you will have several network overlays, and you will have double network encapsulation. So let's imagine that we are using Funnel as your default uh, network solution for, so for Kubernetes. You see that you could, of course, communicate your compute nodes, your VMs on one side, to the VM another one, running containers, and so on. But if you see, you would have, of course, the neutron overlay and the final overlay. And that's not so really effective, so we basically wanted to squash it up and have one single network solution that would work for everything. It, that's why we basically uh, are um, getting and connecting neutron ports directly to to the uh, neutron ports to the pods directly. So let me walk you quickly. Um, I'll try not to spend that much more time, just to save time for Michal part. So I'd like you to walk you through the components that we are mainly working on Kuru. So we have the one controller, which is called Kuru controller. Um, this is responsible for the uh, OpenStack operations. So basically, mainly, and it's, it, this is high level, and we'll be seeing this a little bit more in detail now. But we have two kind of components in Query, which are the drivers and the handlers. So the handlers, basically, they watch for okay, Kubernetes uh, events, such as, uh, hey, I created a pod. Hey, I need a service. And then we have the drivers. And the driver, they do perform uh, crude operations on top of OpenStack. So mainly those are done on the controller. And, we, and the controller also passes um, information about OpenStack resources, and we do, we do yeah, annotate that on, on the Kubernetes annotations field. Then we have the Kubernetes daemon. Uh, this is running on every Kubernetes node, and it watches for new pods and basically do the wire operations uh, requested by the query CNI. Recall, the CNI was the container network interface. Then we have query CNI. This is our specific CNI plugin, and of course, it's accessible with the container network interface, and this one, it passes CNI requests to the query daemon. And let me show you a um, little bit of an overview. So, uh, okay, this is stating OpenShift API server, but feel free to read that as Kubernetes because it'll be the same for this presentation. So, if you see there on the top, we have the query controller, and this guy is watching for uh, Kubernetes events, and it will perform crude actions. For instance, let's say we do create a pod. And no, even better, let's say that we create a deployment. Uh, we are we'll be creating a deployment with just one pod, and this will be okay. But uh, afterwards, uh, of course, we would like to grow our deployment, and we will uh, scale that to a second one. So uh, that would be a service in Kubernetes. So in Kubernetes, we would have a Kubernetes load balancer, which would do the work. But using Kubernetes, we would relay an Octavia there on the left side, and up on the there's any activity people were here, so thanks guys. Uh, so one load balancer would be created, and then um, all the network would be load balanced in between this and that. So also I want to notice that we have like uh, two different use cases where you could use Kuri. You could have like uh, side by side one Kubernetes cluster and your OpenStack installation. And then on this case we are showcasing a more interesting use case is that we're actually like uh, Kubernetes worker nodes are running on top of a VM. So in this case, you see that we have the Kubernetes CNI, which it would basically perform all the wire operations. Uh, it will, you, well, we are using trunk ports, but that was also covered in another session, so I won't enter into that. Um, you'll be having there. Uh, basically, yeah, I just wanted to highlight all the components there, and even if it, this is not the goal of this chat on this session, but I'll be more than well willing to, if there's any question after Michal part, we'll be more than willing to cover this. So with this, I'll be handing over to Michal, and he will explain you how to create this into containers. Thanks, Michal. So you, have a, you should have now the basic uh, image of uh, how, how this, uh, this application works. So I'll show you what uh, requirements are, uh, are there and how we translate that into the Kubernetes uh, resources. 
So first of all, why? Why, why do we want to write the Kubernetes manifests, uh, write the Docker files, and fight the translation of the, of the requirements? Well, basically, it's about uh, installation, distribution, and manageability. Uh, but last but not least, uh, well, most of the CNI plugins offer that, so we simply want to, to use the same, uh, same way of uh, distributing the software. So let's go through the requirements of the Courier Controller. So first of all, um, we've just recently introduced the active passive HA feature, but before that, we need, just, uh, we need to make sure that there is only one Courier Controller instance. So in OpenStack, that would be solved by uh, using Pacemaker that will uh, kill the, the server that is running Courier uh, Controller in case it's uh, out of sync or something. And in, in Kubernetes, uh, this is uh, solved by deployments. So we simply created a deployment uh, primitive for the, for the Courier Controller with the fixed number of replicas as it's listed here. Um, so this, this, this uh, primitive is able to uh, keep the number of pods, which are kind of application instances, uh, in, the, in the constant, uh, constant uh, number of replicas. I've told you about the active passive HA, so that requires uh, some kind of uh, leader election feature. So if you would be running as a normal OpenStack service, that would, be, uh, that would mean using uh, the Oslo 2 library uh, with some kind of backend like Zookeeper or etcd. But if we're running on Kubernetes, we already have uh, etcd running, so why, why, why don't we use it? So in Kubernetes, the, the pattern that is used is using the uh, sidecar, sidecar container. So uh, in this case, the pod, the core, core controller pod will have uh, two containers. So one of the containers, which definition is, uh, simplified definition is listed here, uh, is simply doing the leader election. And uh, on the HTTP uh, address, it is allowing the core controller to query for the, uh, for the current leader. So the core controller will know if it's leader or not, so if it can uh, do the, uh, all the operations or not. So um, in a detailed way, this works uh, as simply, um, so there's, there's an endpoint, which is kind of a Kubernetes resource uh, that is annotated with the current leader name, and uh, all of the instances of this uh, leader elector sidecar container are simply fighting over that annotation, and etcd is keeping them from uh, uh, keeping the, the exclusion that uh, it won't we, we won't have uh, two updates uh, uh, happening at the same, same time. Uh, another requirement is uh, the access to the Kubernetes API. So obviously, Core Controller needs to watch the, uh, for the events on the Kubernetes API. So it's it's done by service accounts. So simply, uh, we create a cluster role which lists all the API that we should have access to. And then we create a service account, bind the cluster role uh, with, the, uh, with the service account, with this cluster role binding uh, kind of resource. And then in the deployments uh, pod spec, we add uh, the service account uh, name. This will make uh, um, the credentials to the Kubernetes API to appear in a well-defined place in the, in the pod file system. And that way, we can access the Kubernetes API from the Courier controller. So, uh, we, should, we should somehow provide the configuration options. So uh, normally in OpenStack services, well, simply deployment tools are uh, handling that. In case of Kubernetes, we have uh, a resource called config map. And so simply uh, we put the configuration in the config map, and in the, uh, in the pod specification, we add the volume, and we mount it where we, where we want it to be, and that way, that way, we have uh, the same configuration shared between the pods, which is, which is quite nice. Um, so Query Controller needs to create the OpenStack resources based on the events in the Kubernetes API. So it needs access to the OpenStack API. So if uh, the access is uh, done uh, through HTTPS, then we need some kind of uh, certificate, CA certificate, or all the other uh, keys to access it. So we implemented that uh, in, the, in Kubernetes through the secrets and config map. So we put the credentials in the config map, but all the, all the keys and certificates are put on secret that is mounted uh, again in a, in a correct place on, uh, on the pod file system. 
there's one, one issue that, that we've um, faced that, okay, so courier, courier Kubernetes is the CNI plugin, right? So it's needed to be, um, so it's supposed to provide networking for the pods. So what happens if we want to, um, to, make, to make this courier Kubernetes run on the OpenStack service, on, on, sorry, on the Kubernetes it is supposed to provide the networking for? Well, the problem is that uh, something needs to provide the networking for that courier Kubernetes uh, pod while, while it's created. So the, um, the solution that we've, we've used is simply uh, using the host networking, even though it's not required for courier uh, controller, but just to make sure that it bypasses the CNI, uh, it's using the host networking, so uh, it can be created even though the CNI is not yet uh, configured. And also it's useful to add this priority class name, so uh, this blocks Kubernetes from evicting the pod, uh, that, that pod in case of, uh, of some, uh, in case the resources are low on the, on the node. So this, this marks the pod that it's critical for the, for the Kubernetes to function, so it should not be deleted in any case. Uh, yeah, so we have this advantage here. So um, as we, we are using host networking, so if there is something running on the Kubernetes node uh, that is using the same ports as the courier Kubernetes, there will be conflicts. So this is kind of problematic. So now we are going through the courier daemon uh, service. So this, it's a bit different. So in this case, we want it to be running on every Kubernetes node. So there's a different uh, Kubernetes primitive that uh, mm, that is solving this, and it's called the daemon set. So this is very similar to the deployment definition, just we don't specify the replicas number, because daemon set is uh, making sure that this service will run on every of the, of the nodes. Uh, this is very similar to the core controller case, so we need to have access to Kubernetes API, that's service accounts, we need to have the uh, configuration pass somehow, that's config maps. This, this is the same as, uh, as I've explained earlier. Uh, but also, Core Daemon is doing all the networking uh, operations. So it's creating the, po the po virtual ports on the, on the host. It's uh, uh, plugging them into the uh, namespaces of the uh, pods being created on that node. So it needs uh, to have right access to, that, to all that uh, kernel networking system. So we, we did that through various, various stuff. So first of all, it needs host networking because it needs to see the same networks as, uh, uh, as the node, as the kubelet does. Then uh, we need to have access to the uh, proc uh, uh, folder from the, from the host. So we simply mount it into the container, but obviously you cannot mount a proc folder into the proc folder of the container. So we mount it uh, somewhere else, so you need to make sure that uh, your, uh, your, the libraries you use for the manipulating the, core, uh, the kernel networking are supporting that the proc uh, folder will be in different place. Uh, then it needs to be privileged container, obviously, because it needs to have uh, root access to the, to the networking. And as uh, we, uh, we are using uh, open vSwitch, it also needs to have the open vSwitch, uh, var run open vSwitch folder mounted into the the container so it can manipulate the open vSwitch database. Uh, we also need to pass some, some information from the pod specification into, into the pods. So this is the solution. So we, pass, we are passing it through the environmental variables. So for example, we need to pass the node name. So the name of the node, the core de the, the, that concrete core daemon uh, is running on uh, is running uh, on currently, because it needs to watch for the Kubernetes events that are happening on, the, on that uh, node. So it needs to know on which node it's, it's, it's running on. So we, we pass uh, this. We've also passed the name of the pod, uh, because it's a bit random. Uh, and I'll show you later on why, uh, why we are doing this, this second, uh, um, or we are adding the second environmental variable. So, Last, but definitely not least, is uh, the problem of injecting the uh, courier CNI executable and CNI configuration. So when you run the courier, courier daemon on all of your, uh, courier daemon pod on all of your uh, Kubernetes nodes, it will also do all the installation and configuration tasks uh, on your, uh, that's, that's needed to 
make the CNI be configured by, to, to use cooler Kubernetes. So this is fairly simple. Uh, we just mount the etcd CNI netd into the container and copy the configuration there. So it will, it will um, appear on the, on the host. So that one, that one easy. And so we also need to mount opt CNI bin. So this is the place where the uh, CNI plugins executables are supposed to be. So we just copy our executable there and we are fine. But the problem is that Courier Kubernetes is the Python application. So it's not really a binary. Uh, it has a ton of dependencies uh, and it needs the Python, Python interpreter. So it's a little bit problematic to, we can, cannot really just copy the application there. So we need to find a solution for that. So just stepping uh, one, uh, doing one step back, why, why do we want to, um, to make Courier Kubernetes pod to install itself on the, on the node? Well, simply other CNI plugins do that, so we use the, the same pattern. Uh, we want to use the same pattern as uh, other uh, are, are using. And as I've said, there are a few, few challenges that we, we have. So at first, we've decided to, because we've tried four approaches until we got it right, so it was kind of uh, difficult. So uh, at first, we've tried to use uh, the Py installer to compile the, the Python app with the, uh, along with the uh, Python interpreter into a single binary and inject that binary. Um, this is a pretty cool logo that Py installer has. It's like from, from 10 years ago, I guess. <laughs> uh, so there are, there are several issues with that approach. So first of all, uh, it, comp it was, the build process of the container was pretty complicated because we needed to ha have uh, intermediate container with the Py installer installation. Uh, we copied code, de code there, then we've um, compiled the code into the binary using Py installer, and then we, needed, we were able to create the second container that was actually the container with the Courier daemon. Uh, we have some, some issues that with the HTTP connection termination that we haven't really uh, solved or looked into too closely, but uh, our QA was uh, freaking out that uh, there are some, some uh, false positive errors, error logs in the, in the Courier daemon logs. So that was another, another issue. But uh, one day also the guys from the OSV library started to added some checks that were depending on the uh, module paths uh, and my installer changes that module, module paths so we suddenly stopped working. Um, we asked the OSV guys to, to remove the checks and they've told us to fix our application. Well, so we did. So another, another idea we've explored was using the Python virtual environment. So, well, Python virtual environment is consisting of the packages, dependencies, and the Python binary, so it should be, it should be fine, right? So it turned out that we, we weren't able to, to make it work at all. So first of all, uh, the problem is that we can have potential architecture mismatches between the arch like CPU architecture on the, on the host. We are copying the uh, VM in and the uh, architecture that the Python binary was uh, compiled with. And also, although there is the um, dash dash recotable option when you are creating a virtual environment, it does not work. Simply, I've tried numerous versions of the VNF uh, binary. I've tried different ways of creating the virtual env. Uh, it's simply, they are not portable. They, you cannot really move the, um, uh, the virtual environment from one place to another. So we need to, to find another approach. And this time we, we have a notion that, okay, this, this might be the way that you should do it. So basically, you have the, on, on each of the Kubernetes hosts, you have the, um, you have the Courier daemon uh, container running. Inside the container, the Courier Kubernetes is installed. So it has the, all the dependencies. It needs to have the, uh, the correct Python binary. And it, uh, it has the Courier CNI uh, executable, right? So why don't we simply execute the, um, Use the, use the docker exec uh, to execute the commands uh, from the, execute the, that command in the container and pass the std in and std out uh, to, to the CNI, to the kubelet that is executing the CNI. 
So, okay, we thought that this is a great idea. So this is a piece of the code that, uh, that gets all the C CNI uh, environment variables, packs them into the parameters on the Docker exec, and runs the, uh, the core CNI. This seems fine. So we can get the container ID uh, by uh, querying the Kubernetes API. It's in the status field. We cannot, we cannot really uh, pass it like uh, we did with the uh, node name because it's in the status field and not the specification, so it's not allowed to, to, to pass it uh, through the same way as we did with the, with the node name. But okay, come on, we can, we can query the Kubernetes API, uh, get the container uh, ID, and put it into the, the script that will inject into the, host, the Kubernetes host. This should be fine, right? So there are some issues with that. First of all, uh, it's uh, passing the environmental variables into the, um, into the Docker exec uh, is supported only from the API, uh, Docker API v1.24. Uh, it's not a big issue because it's fairly fairly old uh, version of Docker. There is some latency introduced because we are we are running stuff through Docker, but it shouldn't be too bad. And the main problem that we've uh, discovered is that, well, Kubernetes API is simply not reliable when uh, uh, when querying for the for the uh, container ID. Simply, we had uh, some kind of race condition that um, when, when the port was starting, uh, sometimes the Kubernetes API was not yet uh, updated with the correct uh, uh, container ID. So we ended up injecting a file that uh, was saying null, con uh, was having null as uh, container ID. And this ended up with, of course, uh, being unable to run the CNI uh, plugin. So uh, the ports were not getting no networks. So we thought about a little bit modified way. And this is the one that we are currently using. So simply, uh, instead of querying the uh, Kubernetes API to get the container ID, we are querying the Docker API on the host, so locally, uh, to get it. So we, uh, we, use, uh, we identify the pod that is running the courier daemon through the uh, labels that uh, are added uh, by the Kubernetes. And this, this works fairly well. There are, of course, those, those two issues that we had previously. So we need some, some version of the Docker API. And there is some latency. There is some more latency because each time the CNI plugin is being um, executed, we are querying the Docker API to get the uh, Docker ID of the, um, of the courier daemon pod. But it still shouldn't be too bad. It's the local API uh, accessed through the um, uh, file socket, so it's fine. <coughs> but also, we need to assume that uh, those labels that we use to identify the, the pod that we are looking for are the stable API. Um, they, it seems that they are, but <laughs> they are not. The Kubernetes is not defining it uh, as stable API. So one day we may wake up with stuff not working with the new version of the Kubernetes. But it, it's, it's fine for now. So the conclusions. Well, basically, that's probably no, uh, no surprise for you. It's making the distribution and manage, uh, management of the core Kubernetes easier. That's fine. We haven't got it uh, right at first. So the problem was uh, we've, we've ended up backporting. So this, this uh, solution came up in Queens, but we've kept uh, fixing it all the way through, through Rocky. And backporting each of the uh, of the ways we we tried to to make this work, so um, it's it was it was a fairly big backport, <laughs> so that's not ideal. But well, we we needed to do that. It took us a few time. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. Especially the bugging that OSV uh, uh, issue that was that was awful. Um, so some, some of the Kubernetes features makes, uh, make uh, development of new, of new features in Kubernetes easier. So for example, this HA uh, stuff that I've mentioned, it is only working when you are running on, on Kubernetes, uh, because we simply use the Kubernetes way of doing leader election and haven't had implemented our own. So it makes developers' life a bit, a bit easier. And there is some... Uh, some new Kubernetes features that are coming in that might be, might be useful, and probably some of you uh, already expect that I will show you the operators. <laughs> uh, 
Um, so simplified uh, operators are the Kubernetes applications written to manage your, your Kubernetes application. Um, so they are meant uh, mostly for the stateful applications. Uh, and Kubernetes Kubernetes tries not to be stateful because uh, it only saves its state into the, through the Kubernetes API and that goes into the etcd. Uh, but it could be pretty useful, for example, for, uh, for HA mode when, uh, when, you, when you scale the Kubernetes controller from one instance into, uh, let's say, five replicas, you need to enable the HA mode, so that's a configuration change. Uh, you should add this leader elector container, so that's a change of the deployment definition. So with operators, we could automate that, which is, which is pretty great. But uh, we are not, not yet looking at that uh, too closely. Uh, so no ETA when we only uh, will support Kubernetes operators, uh, running cooler Kubernetes through, uh, through the operators. Okay, so this is the slide that I show, show often. So if you, if you are interested in the project, uh, this lists the documentation, the IRC channel where we, uh, where we are uh, in. So we are usually quite approachable, so feel free to join us. We are running like weekly meetings there at 2 p.m. UTC in case you have any comments, want to uh, so give us some feedback about your usage and so forth, or whatever, yes, uh, please feel free to join them and tell us so. It might be useful that most of the developers are from, uh, from Europe, so we are uh, available through the, through the yeah, Europe, so. Europe working hours. Okay, and with yeah. that, uh, so, the, here are the links to the slides, so uh, you, might, you might find it useful. And also, there are our, our nicknames on the IRC, our emails, so if you want to give us some thanks or tell us that we suck or whatever, feel free to do so. So I guess now it's the time for questions. Yeah, please, use please, the please use the microphone. This is just behind you. Uh, so I, I understand that you guys are using uh, the courier controller, right? And uh, at the end of the day, uh, if I just boil it down, it's basically like you have making sure that all the neutron resources that you can come up with that can be actually translated into a CNI plugin. Right? Yeah, that's correct. So then why would you actually have to have another separate controller? Because OpenStack already comes with a controller. So you could have already used that to, to actually make your career part of that instead of running as a container altogether. I'm not sure if I get this right. No, you, you, you are running the Courier controller as a separate pod, right, if I understand that's, correctly. That's right. Yeah. So my intent was this then, that if on a Kubernetes, oh. if you want to run the Kubernetes, basically you're trying to use an OpenStack component into the Kubernetes world and mm -hmm. using it as a CNI component, right? That's so right. I was saying that why would we not keep the, uh, the, the form factor, which is basically an OpenStack form factor, as is, for the neutron to be, continue to be there, and then interface into the Kubernetes? Mm. So I've explained the motivations about the, all the Kubernetesization works. Uh, like the main motivation was simply all the other CNI plugins are uh, deployed like that. And so there are some uh, Kubernetes installation tools that are uh, assuming that uh, that you will that the, the CNI plugin will be installable on Kubernetes, and not not sure if that, what, that so, was. I mean, is the intent to be the first class citizen in the Kubernetes world? Is that that's right? That's okay. right. To be first class okay. of the of the C, CNI plugins uh, tribe. Let's okay. Say. Thanks. Also, it it might be useful to say that. We have these this two types of service. So one is Courier Controller, which is doing the OpenStack operations, and the Courier Daemon. So we are, we are not doing the operations from the Courier Daemon because we assumed that uh, access to the OpenStack API is kind of a uh, scary resource. So, uh, so we keep only one service being able to ac access it, and that's the Courier Controller. If, if you want, you can run it on the, on the same nodes as uh, uh, as the core deep, uh, that's core control, and you can run it with, along with the core demons, right? Actually, if you just go and deploy our dev stack to our plane, that's how it's done. It's on node one, node works. The, the thing about it tells us how it's some kind of you know security measure. Oh. Okay, well, if there is no more question, 
questions, I guess we can we can close the presentation. Thank you very much.